This is a Healthier Michigan podcast, episode 32. Coming up, we discuss late summer vegetables and how to grow them and whether or not you have a garden. Welcome to a Healthier Michigan podcast. This is the podcast dedicated to navigating how we can improve our health and well-being through small, healthy habits we can start implementing right now. I'm your host, Chuck Gatica. Every other week or so, we will sit down and we're going to do this with a certified health expert from Blue Cross Blue Shield of Michigan. We'll do a deep dive into topics covering nutrition and fitness and a whole lot more. And on this episode, we're talking about vegetables. I mean, I know summer started officially about three weeks ago or more, is it now? Yeah, I guess it's about five weeks ago. But we want to talk about this idea of it's never too late to get started growing vegetables, even when you live in Michigan. That's right. And if you're hearing this outside of the state of Michigan. You get a lot of summer weather all year long. Well, good for you. Don't rub it in on us. Today, we're joined in by General Manager of uh, Greening of Detroit, Sue Hudnut, and Registered Dietitian, Certified Diabetes Educator, and Health Coach at Blue Cross Blue Shield of Michigan, Grace DeRosha. Good to see both of you. Good to see you. Thank you. I want to tell everybody a little bit about you because Sue Hudnut is a master gardener. She's the garden manager for the Greening of Detroit. She works with this organization. She manages the operations on Lafayette Street, the garden. Gardens, Lafayette Greens Garden in downtown Detroit. She plants it. She plans it. She's got volunteers that come in, other master gardeners. Personally, she's into yoga. She's building a bee house. Ow! And uh, she also loves to be a guest speaker, talking about relevant topics, gardening, native bees, butterflies. We'll talk about caterpillars, too, I think. Health, wellness topics are right in there as well. She loves the outdoors, as you can imagine. She's got, uh, what, three kids? Yes, I do. Three kids, her husband, and she are really into the outdoors, and she loves to eat things low to the ground. That's (laughs) That's right. That's a good way to look at it. (laughs) Grace DeRoche is here. She's back. She's from Blue Cross Blue Shield of Michigan. She's a registered dietitian, as I mentioned. She is a lover of food, a lover of life, and all I know is when Sue walked in before we started this broadcast, uh, she handed Grace what? Uh, Garlic garlic scapes. Scapes. Yes. Delicious. I've had them. They're wonderful. They're my favorite thing to grill and then put in salads. Oh, man, oh, man. Uh, She's a graduate of Michigan State with a Bachelor of Science degree in uh, Dietetics and a Bachelor of Science degree in Psychology. She's also earned her Master of Business Administration from Wayne State. So it's good to have you back. And, Sue, good to have you with us. Thank you. So let's talk about this idea of growing vegetables. We sometimes think it's too late, so we get past. This is airing on July 11th. We're about five weeks or so, you know, in the rearview mirror of summer. Well, summer didn't seem to start in Michigan (laughs) on time, right? That's right. But even when we get to this point, we forget summer just started the third week in June. So is it ever too late to grow in Michigan? I don't think so. I mean, maybe if we were talking in October, it might be a little too late. But I think right now you can still get a vegetable garden into the ground. Okay. And so when you think about this idea of even what Sue handed you, Yes. Right? I mean, you were so excited. You were like a kid <laughs> in a candy store, right? I was. I really love garlic scapes. They add, they have such great flavor. What about other vegetables? You've talked about them before, but here we're talking about growing things. Do you, do you grow a lot of stuff? Do you have I a garden? I do. We do. Yeah. We have two pretty large garden boxes. We allow our two kids to say that one is Tommy's and one's Kalea's, so we get them involved in the process. Yeah. But big fan. Big fan. You have a favorite vegetable? Do you have something you like a lot? I love I love zucchini and zucchini yeah. blossoms. And they love you back. So I that's good. I mean, <laughs> that's a really nice one, right? I've never had a zucchini blossom. You oh. haven't? No. How do you prepare that? Well, you've got to pick them very early in the morning when they're open. And okay. you want to know what is a female flower and what is a male flower. Come on. Uh, yeah. And I know this from her. Sue taught yeah. me this. So I used to pick both. And now I know that was a mistake. And now I don't do that. And then you can enjoy them in salad. You could stuff them. My son and I, my uh, one guy who's the outdoor adventurer, were walking along one day in Ann Arbor, open field. There are dandelions. He said, here, Dad, have one. I wasn't that impressed. Really? <laughs> it, what's the taste of a zucchini flower? Is it something that's, is it bitter? Is it sweet? Is it? It's kind of, it's a little bit sweet, but it depends yeah. on what you put in them. Yeah. I think when you're putting flowers in salads, it just looks so beautiful that mm-hmm. you're just like having a... Oh, I see. Yeah. So there's part of its aesthetic. Then. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, burst yeah. of color, definitely. Good nutrition, Yeah. obviously. Don't you like eating pretty food? Oh, I do. I like... <laughs> yes, yeah. I do. So it's kind of fun. And yeah. I think, too, with like adding flowers to different 
foods or salads. Yeah. There's definitely an aesthetic play. It enhances sometimes some of the other flavors that you're adding to it. So you're a master gardener, Sue, so you've forgotten more than I know about gardening. But let's talk about this idea right now from where we are, early to mid-July. We've already said up front, it's never too late to start. Seriously, though, if you haven't started, we could start a garden in the backyard. We could. If you have a space in your yard, I mean, number one, you're going to have to have a, a really sunny space. Okay. So one of the first things you have to think about is, I need sun, and I need eight to ten hours of sun to mm. have a good vegetable garden. Mm-hmm. So you're going to have to scope out your yard first and pick out that great spot, clear a little patch of land there, mm-hmm. and then you're going to need some good soil. Okay. And you can still buy soil at the Ace Hardware Store, one of the big box Home Depots. They've got raised bed garden soil, top soil, sure. all types, you know, just get a couple bags and bring it in. And then you're going to be a little too late to buy any plants from your, you know, neighborhood plant guy. Usually after the 4th of July, they pretty much close down. So you're going to have to plant some seeds. Okay. But there's still plenty of stuff to plant, such as carrots, Mm -hmm. radishes, beets. Lots of varieties of lettuce. Lettuce is a great one. Um, Kale. Uh Uh-huh. Collards. Things like that. Too late for tomatoes? It's a little too late for tomatoes because they have a long growing season. Okay. And you got to really get those in the ground in the beginning of June. Same with peppers. You can even start bush beans, green beans now. So there's plenty to start with. Yeah. I think really your most important part is getting that sunshine and really good soil. And when you say really good soil, did you think about this idea, Grace, that like what makes really good soil? Are you adding stuff or are you just buying good stuff to begin with? So again, I learned a lot of this from Stuart, top soil. You don't Do you need fertilizer? Do you not need fertilizer? You know, it depends on where you get your soil from. Say you were going to get two yards of soil from your landscaping guy. You have no idea where that soil came from or what's in there. But if you are buying bag soil from a big box store, a lot of those have fertilizers in them already. So you're pretty good to go buying those types of soils if you're starting this late in the game. Yeah. Personally, I would also like to have a compost pile in my backyard, so I'm throwing all my leafy greens and things. Banana peels, wood chips, whatever. Sure, that go in there. And then every year you want to amend your soil with that good, healthy compost, all that good organic material that's in there. Mm -hmm. That's what you really want. This is my first season composting, so I'm excited and nervous. We'll see. I feel like even just talking about this, like gardening is a good metaphor for life. You it need is. some sun. You need some soil, which is like the food. You need some water. Right. I love that metaphor. Right. Or, and you're planting, you know, you're building roots and grounding yourself. I just, I and like that. And you're reusing everything. It's, mm-hmm. you know, it's a sustainable lifestyle. I love you too. This, my <laughs> whole day has been made now because right? I, yeah. And last month I went out with my daughter. We didn't plant vegetables, but we planted a garden. We had our, my grandson with me. We walk into a, uh, actually it was a Walmart. We were on our way to another big box. I said, I bet you they have it. So we go in and we walk in and he sees the topsoil and my eight-year-old grandson sees these bags of cow manure, right? He goes, ew. (laughs) He said, what do you need that for? Do we need to add, do we need to get that into it or really just getting a good topsoil that's got a little peat moss in there and everything is okay? Um, I think for a home garden, if you had a compost pile and you were adding your organic material into the soil that you already have... That's probably good enough. Okay. Um, I think adding some little chicken manure, at, that really does help. Yeah. It really does help boost the nutrients in the soil. And I've always been told, and I don't have an opportunity to get it too often, but adding chicken manure to your garden is just really a great that's way to I've go. That's what I've heard. Mm-hmm. I, I know that that's the case for my brother. He uses yes. it throughout his garden. And he's got raised beds, and you said this, and it kind of flew past me. Why do I see people either using concrete blocks or wood to raise the bed, except for the fact that the bunnies can't really jump that high to eat all the stuff off the top? What's the point? It could be that the land that you're on has a lot of clay or a lot of sand. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you want really dark, loamy soil, and that is a combination of clay and sand and good organic material. But it's in the right proportions. A lot of people have really just bad soil. Like where I live, I live in the old Black Bottom neighborhood. So there's a lot of rubble in my soil. 
So we really had to build it up a lot. And that's why people do raise beds. So if we were to plant some of the things you were talking about now, what, and I know it's going to vary, we're planting by seed. When would I start to see stuff that I could eat? If you planted lettuces, those come up really quick and you could be eating within 30 days. Wow. Radishes, the same thing. Carrots take a little longer. Beets Mm -hmm. take a little longer. There are vegetables that you can grow, especially things like leeks and um, kale and spinach that will go into October. A lot of vegetables like a cooler type weather. You know, when it gets really hot in July and August Mm -hmm. in Michigan, Mm -hmm. Some vegetables tend to bolt, you know, where they, they start flowering and they start tasting bitter. So it's, it's really a good thing to plant later on, mm-hmm, you know, in the summer. Mm-hmm. And so now you're into September and things just are happy. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's been your biggest discovery with even some of the things you've learned from Sue Grace? I mean, what? I, God, I've learned so much from her. I've at, Well, and I know we're going to get into this a little bit, but I might be jumping the gun. But I think talking about cold weather and warm weather plant, like vegetables that grow better. Right. We have hot weather vegetables and cold weather vegetables. The hot weather vegetables that we were talking about earlier, like peppers and Mm -hmm. tomatoes and things like that. So a lot of these cool weather vegetables, you can plant early on in the spring and then do a second season again later on. And what is a cool weather veggie? What is that? Your lettuces, your greens, your radishes, your carrots, your beets, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, things like that. The warm weather vegetables are more like eggplant, tomatoes, peppers, cucumbers. This with with a summer flourish. (laughs) If you could just see it. Oh, I guess you can. You know, yeah. I mean, and I want to think, ooh, what one's my favorite vegetable? But I I think I have too many. I pick zucchini just because I love zucchini yeah. so much. But like we planted early. So I do, we have eggplant, we have tomato. I was telling you guys, I do have like this big pot where I grow my greens so I can make salad whenever I yeah. want. Yeah. I just did that the other day. It's super fun. But you know, if you're growing all this stuff, isn't the Instapot one of the greatest inventions you could use? Because all this <laughs> stuff. I, I don't use an Instapot. You don't? <laughs> no, I feel so embarrassed. No. Oh, why? Oh, why? oh well, you oh, should Oh, gosh, get I just cook. So for people, an Instapot is a pressure cooker. Instapot yeah. is yeah. a specific brand. I It's funny because I do use it sometimes, but I feel like I tend to use a slow cooker more, because probably because I'm more familiar. Yeah. My wife, too, we got one, and she still wants to use the crock pot. And, of course, it's a convenience issue because you can yes. be it out, out all day. But what I like about the idea with any way you're going to do this is handfuls of great vegetables can all turn into a recipe that you didn't even imagine before you started. Well, I'm going to have to check it out because I do use my slow cooker quite a bit because I leave early yeah. in the morning. Yeah. I'm gone all day, but that Instapot I have not yeah. tried yet. Yeah. So there, it, I feel like it's worked for me, especially with the Instapot, like a pressure cooker to cook something fast. Maybe I didn't thaw out right. the chicken and then I can just cook it still in about 20 minutes. I keep snapping my fingers. Sorry. That's all right. <laughs> but I think that is a good thing. But then, of course, the grill. The grill is so great. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. In we were summer. just talking about grilled veggies before we started. I'm getting hungry for lunch. So Grilled veggies are my favorite. Can I tell you one little thing that I loved? My grandfather was a uh, gardener. I mean, he was a farmer. And he would teach us different tricks of the trade. But one of the things, and I was a kid, I know, so uh, I think I would still be impressed today. I loved when I would watch planting seeds. Mm -hmm. To me, one of the biggest aha moments was when something would grow and I finally knew I could figure out what the difference between a weed and a carrot. You know, you you (laughs) get to that point where you're like, I know it now. I mean, it was a little achievement, but it really is a great thing that hits you. And I think those are the two easiest things to start. You know, if you're afraid to start this, radishes. Yes. Are easy and they come up fast and you know exactly what they are and you're eating them in, you know, 30 to 45 days. And I feel bad for radishes because I feel like radishes. <laughs> they get a bad rap, <laughs> they don't get, they? Yeah. <laughs> they do get a little bit of a bad rap. People aren't as familiar with them. Yeah. So they don't want to try them or they try to pickled one so they don't know what a radish radish tastes like. Radish radish. Well, and another good thing about doing seeds like that is there's so many different varieties that you don't get in the grocery store. Mm -hmm. So if you pick up a seed catalog, especially like an heirloom seed catalog. Watermelon radishes. Yeah, I I mean, there's so many different varieties that you don't see 
ever in yeah. the grocery store, yeah. ever. Now, let me ask you a dumb question for both of you, because I'm not growing a garden currently, but wh- how do you know the difference between, like a zucchini, a watermelon? I can see it. I know when it's done. There's no pop-up timer on a radish or a carrot. Like, how do I know under there when that it's the done, beets are done? Right. You should write down the date that you planted it. That's it? It's yeah. that simple? Yes. I, I shouldn't be digging around to see if my carrot is the size I was hoping I it mean, should be. I mean, it's really hard not to pull them out sometimes <laughs> just to look. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but Can you, you put them back? No. no. Okay. <laughs> I learned that the hard way. So my kids will go into the garden when we had carrots and they were pulling them. And they looked like little bait. I'm like, you guys, what did you do? And then they're like, we're just going to replant them. I yeah, was like, no. Kalei yeah. and Tommy, you can't do that. Yeah. They're like, we're just going to eat them then. So. Yeah. so you should keep a little diary and look on the package of the seeds that you're planting. It will tell you how many mm-hmm. days Or like harvest. sometimes we write it, you know, those plants on markers. On the sticks, yeah. Mm-hmm. Plant markers, put, yeah. Like, we'll put the date on there gotcha. of when we put it in and then it's kind of there. A lot of times on radishes, though, they are, and beets and turnips and things like that, they are starting to pop out of the ground, Mm -hmm. their little tops. So you you know. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So let's talk about the nutritional value. We instinctively know this stuff is good for you, but if we're going to grow like you want us to healthfully, then what kind of nutrients are locked up in all these veggies that we can access? So one of the beautiful things, if you do grow a garden, is that you know what you used. You know that you didn't use pesticides. You know that you're pulling it with the most nutrition at that time. And then you get to take it right into your house. It is just very cool to know that you can feed your family and feed yourself with your garden at home. Yeah. So lots of things. Obviously, people always talk about carrots and eye health. So we have beta carotene and vitamin A, which is definitely good for eye health to help prevent things like macular degeneration and other issues that might mm-hmm. come up. So yay, carrots. Of course, our cruciferous vegetables, which we talked about. Broccoli has a lot of calcium, which I think people forget. Yeah. So if anyone's lactose intolerant or not getting enough calcium in, great way to get some. And I have to say this. So we need vitamin D to help absorb calcium from our broccoli that we're going to grow. Well, when you garden, guess what you're doing? You're out in the sunshine Getting yeah. the best way to get vitamin D really is the sun. Well, and think about this, uh, you know, it's been going on forever, and I see various studies about chugging down vitamins every day. Vitamin D works, it doesn't work. I saw that headline this morning. Mm-hmm. Vitamin C, you should take vitamin whatever. And when you're eating like this, yes. low to the ground, aren't you kind of fulfilling that mission? Absolutely. Yes. Without going out and buying vitamins you don't even know work? Yes. Yes. Yeah. I always say vitamins are called a vitamin supplement because they're supposed to supplement yeah, the diet. Right. Right. You want to try to get it from your food. That is the goal. What else? Oh, of course, leafy greens, kale. You could make kale chips. You could add it to a salad. You could stir fry it. You yeah. could add it to your soups, your stews. I'm getting excited. And at last, you know, when you harvest kale, yes. it la- you know, you wash it and you can put it in your vegetable crisper and it lasts, yeah. you know. For- I feel like it lasts longer than some yeah. of your other greens, oh, yeah. for sure. Yeah. yeah, and and when you're harvesting it out of your garden, you're obviously taking it right there into your kitchen, mm-hmm. whereas if you bought it at the grocery store, it's gone through some distributor mm-hmm. with all these hands handling it and who knows how long. Right. You know, it's been on a truck mm-hmm. and been sitting in the grocery store, so it's really fresh. Yeah. And when it's that fresh, that's when you get the biggest bang for your buck with the nutrition. Not that when you're at the grocery store, you shouldn't still get kale. But I just want that to be very clear because people will be like, well, Grace said if I don't yeah, yeah. I have a garden. But so, but definitely having that time in that garden and having it in your backyard is such a good Isn't it funny how the phrase farm to table becomes something a lot of people only think about in terms of a restaurant that they think is cool and we should go to, mm-hmm. when most of the meals you probably are getting, likely in your life, are at your own home? If you have a garden. Right. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. And then all of these vegetables are filled with fiber, which I'm kind of going generally across the board. But the average American is only getting about 5 to 10 grams of fiber a day when we're supposed to get closer to 25 to 40 grams a day. Mm. I mean, that's good for good gut health, for your digestive tract, obviously good nutrition for good heart health, helps keep you regular. And it doesn't take up a lot of time. I mean, getting the initial garden in the ground, yes, spend a Saturday afternoon doing that. But, you know, once you've got it in the ground, you've got the seeds in the ground, you only have to water right. 
you know, really water it really well once a week. Here, this fall or this spring has been crazy. (laughs) I haven't had to water much at all because of all the rain. But it really doesn't take up a lot of your time. I found that when I get home from work, I just kind of drag the hose out there, check things, pull a few weeds, you know, see what's ready to harvest. But it really... Well, it's a small patch for most of yeah. us, right? Yeah, so it's, it's not, not like, like you're the, farming. It's not you like your lawn either, right, right? Right, Yeah. Right. Well, and I think when I think about Sue and how she's calm and balanced, I think it's really important to stress that gardening helps you de-stress. Yeah. It can help reduce symptoms of depression, help level off cortisol levels, which is a hormone that causes stress or like a stress hormone, helps increase happy hormones. Mm -hmm. So talk about a benefit all around. You're getting good nutrition from the ground. You're helping your mental health. Right. You're de-stressing and enjoying the outdoors. What could be better? Nothing. And if you don't (laughs) have that patch in your own backyard, not everybody has the back 40, right? Right. I just want to point out, like in Livonia, for instance, my sister and brother-in-law live in Livonia. They rent a little patch of ground through the municipality. Right. They get it. It's really inexpensive. I don't know. It's like 35 bucks or something. They get their patch, they bring their tools, they provide water from the city, and my brother-in-law plants a ton of stuff. Well, they don't have the place in their backyard. Right. Not everybody is going to have, you know, a space in their backyard. And we're lucky that we have a lot of communities that do do community gardening like that. Yeah. Yeah. Tell us, tell us a little bit about that. Well, the garden that I manage downtown, which is next door to Lafayette Coney Islands, is not like that. (laughs) Unfortunately, we do have 39 raised beds, but mm-hmm. it's it's open to the public. I give away a lot of the food. If you engage in a conversation with me, <laughs> I'll more than likely be sending you off with a bag full of food. Yeah. But there are other community gardens. Um, I know in downtown Detroit, I know there's one in Midtown, and they're scattered about. There's one in New Center, too, right off of West Grand and... Uh Fairly uh, large one. Mufi. Is that uh, what it is? The yeah. Michigan Urban Institute of Farming, I believe, okay, or something right like that. Okay, right off of Woodward Avenue. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know exactly how that works, but I would call your local municipality to find mm-hmm. out if they have something like that. Yeah. Or you can get involved and start your own. Yeah. Right. I've volunteered at them before, which yeah. is great, you know, usually earlier in the season, but you can still always go. Yeah. I love well, all. when you think of a salad, when I think of a salad, I love the textural look, and you were talking about the aesthetics of a flower. So if you're throwing in blueberries or mm-hmm. strawberries, right, you're talking about all these great benefits. Antioxidants are in there. Yes, right? there it is. All that colorful and stuff is I'm helpful. I'm glad that you brought up anti. So antioxidants only come from food. You can't get that in that supplement that I want you to eat the food anyways, please. So antioxidants. What do you mean you can't get all these things that are marked antioxidant? Yeah. So... What? What? Like when you're talking about a supplement? Right. No. You can't. Yeah. Like phytochemicals, which is plant chemicals in a positive way. Yeah. That you get those from the food. Those are not wow. really. Wow. I didn't okay. even know that. Those are not really coming from, because then that's not truly coming yeah, from. Yeah, right. Another reason to eat low to the ground. And when I say that, I mean, you know, you're pulling out your food from the ground mm-hmm, or you're mm-hmm. trimming your food from the ground. You're not opening a can or opening a box. Right. Less process. Yep. That is actually, people ask me this all the time. What is the one tip? If you had one tip that you could give all people and I say, eat whole foods. I'd rather have people eat whole foods mm-hmm. rather than processed. That's my number one. And then drink water. Drink lots of water. Drink a lot of water, yeah. Well, that's a good idea to take out with you to the garden, too, because you can get a little worked up, especially early in the season. Yeah, absolutely. If you're not used to being outdoors, always have your water with you. But you talked about keeping your garden healthy. So how do we do this? Because I know you don't want to use pesticides, right? Nope. Okay, so I want to keep my garden healthy. We're starting with good soil. We've got that part. What else do we need to consider? Good soil. Sunshine. Right. And seeds, really. Those are the three major things that you need. And again, uh, your seeds could come from a variety of places. A lot of people like to do organic seeds or heirloom seeds, but you could choose to do just Johnny's own seeds (laughs) from the hardware store. And you could even collect your own seeds, which I do quite a bit of. Uh, I don't want to go down that path because it gets a little more complicated. But those are the three main things you need for a healthy garden. And then just to maintain it, you want to maintain your soil. Have a compost pile. Start a compost pile. 
So is it good? Do I need to bring in like a box of ladybugs? Is there any natural way Ooh. for me to add to... <laughs> Oh, yeah. now look at Sue. Oh, my gosh. I didn't even know. Well, we don't want to use pesticides right. or insecticides, and there are bad insects out there like aphids that might mm-hmm. start eating up your plants. So what what we want to do is if we have bad insects, we have good insects. Mm-hmm. And the good insects eat the bad insects. So, so Ladybug is a good one. Ladybugs are great. Also, praying mantis are wonderful for your garden. And, this is uh, my favorite. Yeah. You can actually, you can order them online. Yeah. You, you can order a praying mantis, like, egg sack. Or Come you, on. Or, <laughs> That's real. Or you can go out and find them. Yeah. You can go out in early spring and, you know, go searching for these little nests and you just, you'll find them on brush. You need to know what you're looking for, but you just break them off and you bring them home and stick them in your garden. Can you see people listening to this and they've seen the movie Arachnophobia? <laughs> they, I think you'd be kind of worried you're bringing home the wrong pest. Well, you're going to put it in your garden, not your house. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Sue taught me this. I told my husband and he was Googling all the things. He's like, next spring I'm finding one and I'm going to bring it into our garden. Yeah. He Did really he find excited. any? No, we haven't found, but he, well, he, he just looked it up so he could figure out what it looks like. So when we go on the hunt, maybe we're we should find go one. out hunting together because I have a great little oh, patch to a, go. Oh, that's a secret good. Spot. Yeah, the secret <laughs> spot. But each praying mantis egg case could have up to 300 praying mantis. But when you, bring, when you bring these guys into your, you know, you fly in a box of whatever, when you release them, how far out are they going to go? Because the neighbors got a yard and they may have a garden, but you don't care. Well, you don't really care. Yeah. You want because they're kind helpful. Of, they're yeah, helpful they're bugs. helpful. And hey, maybe your your neighbor yeah. you know needs some help too. <laughs> sure, <laughs> you want to sure. spread the wealth. All right, so beneficial bugs we've talked about weeding out. So I talked about this idea that this was one of the biggest, coolest aha moments. And again, it's just me, so temper me. But I, it it was just this idea that I could recognize the part of a carrot coming out. If we're going to plant a seed and sometimes, you know, we sprinkle them and they start to grow, what's the healthful distance between each plant that we want them to be? That is a great question, especially with carrots and radishes, because if you don't thin them out, you're not going to have a nice, healthy plant. So you should really look at the package again. But when you plant a row of seeds, you're going to plant a lot of seeds. Right. And you're going to end up wasting, I say waste, but you're going to end up pulling out at least 70% of the sprouts that come up because you're going to have to thin those out. And then you can just take those seedlings and put them in the compost pile, or you can chop them up and put them in your salads. Mm-hmm. But what, when they're seedlings, we couldn't move them to a different bed at that point? They're still not transplantable? I have found if you're doing root vegetables like radishes and carrots, once you, dis- once you disturb that gotcha. root, Okay. Not going to happen. Not like a tomato seedling where you can transplant. Absolutely. Absolutely. So you do have to thin those things out. If you don't thin them out, the vegetable won't properly produce. Hmm. You know, it's just Hmm. not going to grow. So you do have to do that. You're also going to have those seeds in a nice long line. Right. Right. So you're going to wait for those seeds to pop up and they're going to get their first leaves, their first true leaves before you start thinning those out. Anything that's outside of that line is probably weeds, and you want to get rid of those. And then wherever your next line is, what, five, six inches apart? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And yep. same thing in the line yep. then, just thin out. Yep, thin hmm. those out. If you are using compost or fertilizer and all your water, you're feeding those weeds mm-hmm. too. So you mm-hmm. want to get rid of those. I have two questions, and I'm going to ask because I feel like the people need to know. When and how much do you water? Well, if you listen to MSU... And Go I green. do. Go green. They, do. Yeah. They, <laughs> s- they say a, a vegetable garden needs about two inches of water a week. So how do you measure that? Right. Well, you're going to put a little rain gauge there. Yeah, you could. You want to water in the morning if you can. I felt like that was, when you first taught me that, I thought that was really eye-opening because I often, like even when I was growing up, we had a large garden mm-hmm. and my parents would get home from work and then water. Like that was a thing, you know what I mean? But that was the evening. Yeah, and I mean, that's probably when it's convenient for you. Right. And yeah. even last night, it started, it rains at night. Right. Right. So you, you don't want to practice watering at night because 
you've got water sitting on leaves and that's when fungus could start growing and pathogens mm-hmm. might start coming in. So just as a general practice, you'd like to water in the morning. Just doesn't happen all the time. But you know, two inches of water, that's about double what is the typical recommendation for your garden in general. Your garden, anybody that gets an inch of water, natural or otherwise, from your sprinklers, that's about all you need every yeah. week. So this is a little more water. It is, but you're, you know, you're growing vegetables. So everybody's garden is different. Everybody's soil is a little bit different. So you want to use your visual cues. Is the soil like cracking and dry on top? You yeah, probably yeah. should water it, you know, right. if, if you can grab some of that soil in your hand and make a fist and it's... Still mm-hmm. a gun, you know? It's well, it ma- kind of makes sense because most vegetables are 85% water or more. Right. So they obviously need that yeah. water to grow. and then So you had another question. You yes. don't have to raise your hand like, ooh, Mr. Cotter, Mr. <laughs> Cotter. Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. yeah. Mr. <laughs> Miss, Miss Hudnut. <laughs> I've asked you this before. Deer and rabbits and oh, squirrels. Yeah. Oh. They want to eat all I my food. I don't have any of those downtown. <laughs> <laughs> That's Well, maybe we need to move our garden. Right. You know, bunnies and squirrels and things like that, you're going to have to fence in your garden. And if you have a problem with deer, you need a high deer. fence. Deer will eat a ficus tree. I mean, they would eat your taxis hedges yeah. right down to right? the nubs. Huh? Really? Yeah, yeah, they do. And you're just going to have to fence it in. So, yeah. yeah, last year, thanks to Sue, we did start to fence in a bit, and it, it was better. Does any of that natural repellent you hear about using stuff like even dried blood around the perimeter of your beds or your gardens, any of that work? I heard my hair for my hairbrush. I was yes. supposed to sprinkle. Really? Exactly, mm-hmm. yep. yep. Wow. Someone just someone just posted that the other day um, on how to get rid of the squirrels. Because squirrels are so damaging. You know, they just rip. They don't eat it. They just rip it out of the ground and then mm. walk away. Yeah. Sassy little squirrels. Yeah. But uh, someone did post that the other day that you need to, you know, put hair around your plants. I've tried using a plethora of stuff in it. Yeah. No, fence. A fence. fence. Okay. <laughs> and the raised bed idea actually does help, right? Because it they helped. can only jump so high, those little It guys. helps with the bunnies. Yeah. yeah. But not uh, the squirrels. Not the squirrels and not the deer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My brother's got blueberry bushes up north, and he's got the netting across the top oh, to prevent doesn't... the big birds from coming in. Oh, yeah, yeah. Birds. But that's birds not too. for a little garden, I would take it. Um, well, actually, that's you a good could? point. Birds because, are sassy, too. Yeah, birds tend to eat the tender little sprouts that oh. come up. They peck at them, yeah. especially uh, lettuces and spinach yeah, and things I, like that. I did have strawberries for a second. The birds, the birds got, them? got them? Yep. Yeah. Someone got them. And it wasn't me. (laughs) So let's go back and talk uh, for everybody as we start to wrap things up about where we are and how we can get started. It is not too late to start. It is not too late to start. And starting means we need good soil. We need good soil and a place in our backyard or where we're going to be gardening that gets eight to ten hours of sunshine a day. Mm-hmm. If you're, That's you know, tough in Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it has been this year. It has been this year, but yeah. um, if your yard is full of big trees, it's going to be a problem. Sure. Okay, and then watering. And then watering, you have to have access to water. So I'm assuming you're going to do this in your backyard and not out in some field. Yeah, and I, I have to share with you this funny conversation from last month where I, we're getting the soil for my daughter's yard. And I decide to pop, I'm helping her, I, I decide to pop for the $2.25 a bag, stuff that has good <laughs> stuff in it. But I'm overhearing a conversation from a senior and his wife. Well, should we get the buck and a half bag of topsoil? And you can feel it's just kind of clunky. Or should we get the stuff that's got some peat in it? And and I'm thinking it's 75 cents for a giant bag. That's the difference. Go ahead and splurge a little bit, right? I mean, if you're going to get good soil, just go for it. I would. Yeah. Especially if it's your first garden and it's the first time you're laying down some soil and you don't have a compost pile to mix in all that good organic stuff. Yeah. And Grace, what is your advice beyond this idea of good soil, sunshine, watering? What about fertilizing? Are we doing anything? Is that just natural, though, right? Whatever's in the soil and then forget it? Personally, I like to use the organic matter out of my compost pile. Every year I'm going to be amending my soil with big shovelfuls and mixing that all together. So no stuff you're putting in your watering can or don't do any of that? Personally, I don't do that. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I definitely piggyback on try. Try to do something. We don't really touch on this, but I think herb gardens, if you're like a little timid oh, yeah. or nervous, maybe start there. Even, 
I love wildflowers for the bees, of course, and to help pollinate your garden. Mm-hmm. So we do have wildflowers mm-hmm. too. But start somewhere. Bringing up herbs too. There's so many herbs that are really easy to grow. Mint. They go crazy. Mint, mm-hmm. chamomile. Yeah. I had to put mint in a separate place because yeah. it was taking. It, it's like a weed. Yeah, yeah. right. You definitely want to put mint into a pot. Yes. Yeah. We did. We did because it was taking over. But I think herbs are another great way to season your food in a healthy way to avoid, you know, extra sodium or extra fat. And you're getting some really And if you flavor. want to relax, I'm just saying, after you've worked in the garden, if you grab a handful of mint and just crush it in your hand and just basil, smell it while you're sitting back. Lavender. Oh, yeah. Right. Lavender. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm getting excited <laughs> now. I've got to go out and start. It's not too late. Well, Sue Hudnut, thanks. Good to have you here. Thanks for having me. And Grace, always good to see you. Thank you. Thank you yeah, both. Yeah, good luck with your garden this season as well. Uh, listen, if uh, you are looking to start a garden, just remember, it's not too late. Don't be afraid to start. We want you to get going because it's a good time this time of the year. Thanks for listening to a Healthier Michigan podcast. It's brought to you by Blue Cross Blue Shield of Michigan. If you like the show, you want to know more, check us out at a healthiermichigan.org slash podcast. You can leave reviews there or you can leave a rating on Apple Podcasts or Stitcher and you can get new episodes on your smartphone or tablet. Be sure to subscribe to us. I'm Chuck Gatica. Have a great rest of your season.